So what I would get is something like quantum dot cellar automata below so they're not necessarily quantum computers, but they're essentially using nanoscale uh, circuits, but they're not really using uh, electrical currents or anything. So they're pretty low dissipation. The ultimate limit is, of course, using completely reversible computing, which at least in theory and doesn't have to dissipate anything. In practice, there are various uh, complications. But that seems to be rather tricky, especially when you need to do error correction. So I think quantum dot cell automata, that's kind of my benchmark to our ultimate forms of computing. It's probably possible to do something much better, but that would be uh, definitely enough to actually run a full uh, brain emulation of very few watts of power. And then you can start doing interesting calculations like, well, if you converted all of mankind to brain emulations, what would the ecological footprint be? And it turns out to be, of course, much, much smaller. If you just lived off electrical current, and of course your dinners were all virtual uh, feet. Well, in that case, it turns out that you could just need, uh, I think, a few hundred uh, square kilometers of uh, solar collectors in the Sahara Desert to sustain all of humanity. So humanity would be a computer center hidden under the desert or something like that. Probably safer to distribute that much more. But actually, you wouldn't need all the farmland. You wouldn't need the factories and roads, etc., etc. What the humans would actually go for, kind of uploading it in order to be green, I don't know. Uh, someone doubts this, but if you really want to be green and make a humanity very sustainable, this seems to be actually a pretty good idea. Uh, I think uh, being an upload is a good start. Uh, you can do amazing things by having backups, for example. Uh, it's one thing to have life extension. I think that's a great thing and we should work very hard on uh, because uh, it's going to take quite a while before we're going to get to the uploads. But in the end, um, if your truck runs you over, it doesn't matter how useful your body is, you're still going to be dead. And currently, it's not going to save you if you got squashed. So being able to have backups, and the idea of backups far away, that is really good in order to sustain oneself. It's also going to be easier to upgrade the brain. Uh, because right now, of course, we've got just one brain, and any mistake we do with that is permanent. Uh, so I think uh, the ideal thing uh, would be to, uh, to have an editable brain, which is rather scary on its own. I definitely don't want anybody else to be able to access my brain, but I definitely want to be able to do some upgrades. You can do all sorts of interesting research here, raising all sorts of very tricky philosophical questions. For example, if I am a, a consent to have a copy of my brain, subject that to serious neuroscience, which is very painful and it actually completely breaks that simulation, but that's no problem. I just turn it on and it dissipates into zeros. And uh, now I know useful things. And that's still around. Of course, uh, I might not uh, agree uh, if I find myself being that uh, simulation. But there might be even trickier things. I mean, suppose I actually do believe this is for greater good. Would that make it ethical? There are, again, uh, some uh, ethics about self experimentation, etc. Now, but there are some from the research you're not allowed to consent to, even uh, if you think it's good. However, most of those are based on the idea that death is permanent. But if you've got backup copies and so on, death is not quite permanent. And it makes things a bit different. It's not clear that you're going to make all forms of this kind of research ethical. I think quite a lot of them are still going to be unethical. But some forms of research that would be unethical today would indeed become ethical. Because you can you know, perhaps erase the memories of being in a bad state or uh, even being temporarily insane. You can actually undo a lot of these changes. And if, once you can do that, you can do an, an amazing amount of neuroscience. And of course, if a, there is a really brilliant neuroscientist who likes himself and uh, makes a lot of copies, you're also going to get a lot of neuroscientists doing a lot of stuff. So you're going to get a very rapid rate of progress. So this is a thing, things, I think yeah, things are looking like we would very rapidly get a transition to a very different kind of post-humanity once a sizable fraction of humans start uploading. Yeah, I, I believe that a lot of people are just going to say, no, no, this is just a very expensive, tricky way of committing suicide and creating software that claims to be you. Uh, so a lot of people are just going to say, no, no, this won't work at all. And then, of course, you've got to see the television interview with the first uploading to give a television interview. And a lot of people are still not going to be uh, convinced by that. But over the next few years, you're going to see an enormous economic transition as at least some uploads uh, occur. And if uh, it's cheap enough to run the computing power, you're going to get uh, a lot of uh, upload copies, which is going to produce a lot of economic change. 
And uh, that we might already be very turbulent. But I think after a few years, you're going to tend to know a few uploaded people. You're going to know a few ants, emulations. And that once you start talking to them, well, at that point it's going to be much trickier to claim that we're not conscious at least. You might still think that, oh, you're not the original. Very well, so what? I think I'm the original set the emulation to you. Um, so you're going to notice that they really don't feel they have lost anything. So there are going to be uh, more and more people that are going to be willing to make this step. Uh, most of them are probably just going to do it, of course, when they're old and dying because they have nothing to lose. Uh, and there are going to be some people who say, no, I'd rather die than do this, or this is against God's will, or it's actually not me, etc. So it's going to be a, a sizable fraction of you that's probably not going to go anywhere. But meanwhile, I going to think you're going to see faster and faster computers, of course, and more and more of them. So you're probably going to see an upload civilization that accelerates by the lot. So I think there is uh, a lot of people might, uh, although they have misgivings, might also want to scan those because they feel that otherwise uh, the, the upload civilization of humanity is going to rush on without me. And I think a lot of people might actually kind of miss the train. You're going to have this uh, enormous uh, in our economic entity. The uh, in economic uh, progress done by an upload civilization is probably going to dwarf what we can be doing. Which means that if you're not part of that and not running at those speed, you're actually going to be left in dust and uh, you're going to wonder what happened. Uh, so a lot of people are probably going to want to resist this uh, development. So there's going to be a quite a lot of interest in politics and philosophy down around this time. So it might be very turbulent. Uh, we actually at the FHI, we haven't really settled on whether this would be a good or a bad thing. I'm generally optimistic. I think it sounds like it would be a good thing. Uh, but still, there's a lot of steps here which are scary. There are a lot of potential for things to go terribly, terribly wrong. After all, it's, uh, in the early days, software is probably not going to have human rights. So what's stopping me from setting up a virtual sweatshop, having a few thousand copies of a brain doing uh, labor for me? Well, uh, I might be unethical about it, but it still might be economically very, very useful, which might lead to very nasty arms races uh, about it. And similar, of course, you might have a million copies of somebody feeling that, oh, we're getting economically outcompeted here. We don't want to be a race. We're going to see it's control of the means of production. And, of course, you're going to get the virtual unions where they're trying to get higher wages for virtual work, etc., etc. So it might be a bit too exciting. But I think it's an interesting scenario because we can actually make out a lot of details. Maybe we're just telling each other stories uh, that we think uh, are likely to be true because there are details. But at least we can put some scientific input into the, for example, economic costs of a uh, scanning process. We actually have some data. We can make some guesstimates there. When it comes to pure AGI, we don't have that kind of data. We have no idea how hard it is to come up with a generally intelligent algorithm. We just guess that uh, it might be uh, uh, hard or easy, and we don't really have a, a good idea. So that means that we can't really make any reasonable predictions about when we're going to get it, how powerful it's going to be, and what it's going to do to the world, which is even more unsettling, perhaps. Yeah. So I think the most likely scenario is that you uh, freeze a brain, uh, probably, in, uh, well, I think the first volunteer to this process is going to be a cryonics patient. Somebody who's frozen their head and uh, also signed the uh, saying that I, I want to be the first or something like that. Uh, it's a very brave, if stupid person to do that. Uh, so that process would indeed be a dead brain with some damage which we need to get around. At that point, I think we would have a lot of experience about actually scanning uh, other brains. So essentially, we need a fixation method. And that's probably involving some form of scanning uh, a frozen brain, but it might also be that we add various forms of plastic and stuff to make it more rigid. So we're going to have to test out these methods on smaller mammalian brains before. So hopefully, that's actually going to be a brain that was deliberately prepared in that way. But it's likely that there's going to be some brain damage which we're going to have to solve by kind of photoshopping the uh, tissue slices. We have to kind of fill in the details. So there are going to be some slight differences. Whether they are big enough to matter or not, that's uh, something we're going to find out. <laughs>